Survival horror games from the 90s had incredible ambient soundtracks, not that uncommon from the sound of classic atmospheric jungle tracks of the same time period. I'm going to show you how to create this type of music using similar techniques that they would have used back then, and it's going to sound a little bit like this. example of the type of feel we're going for. A lot of this sonic texture can be contributed to the tools and production methods utilized by producers in the 90s. Heavy usage of sample CDs, samplers, and old romplers really helped create this vibe and feel. But let's also not forget the amazing producer behind the tools. Before we get started breaking down the track from the intro, be sure to go check out my last video on how to create ethereal pads using some old 90s technique It'll just give you some more in-depth examples of how to create the pad specifically. It's a really good video to just pick up some additional tips. The first thing I want to look at is the pad, which is probably the most important element for setting the tone. Now, if you remember in the beginning, we, we talked about how sample CDs were utilized a ton by a lot of these composers. And this specific pad sample comes from the Dream Zone sample CD by Zero G. And the sample alone sounds like this. It's already a fantastic sample and it just speaks to how important it is to just start with a good sample. Now, this already has a lot of texture built into it. You probably heard on the playback, there's a little bit of noisiness in that sample. And what I did is I took that sample and put it in my DAWs sampler, you'll see here. And when we do that, it allows us to essentially play that pad sample like an instrument. So, Now what's cool about that, and I've talked about this in other videos, is you get that parallel harmony sound where you take that already very melancholic sounding pad and then you're transposing it in the sampler. It just enhances that feel when you play a progression with it. I did some basic processing here. The first thing I did was pitch the sample down, negative 4.70 semitones. Then I added a bit of release and attack to the sample. And that just helps the sample come in a little more gradually and then fade out a little slowly. The next thing to do, if I open the inspector panel here, is make sure you have enough voices of polyphony, especially if you're playing a progression with the sample. That's going to allow you to let go of a note. You'll get the release that you set up and then you can move into the next note very smoothly. So you get a little bit of overlap, again, just helps with the vibe and feel. Now, if we look at the progression itself, I'll pull up the MIDI here. This is very simple. We're just playing a B2, G3, D3. Um, very simple progression there, and we're just repeating that throughout the song. So it sounds like this. Very gritty sounding, awesome sounding sample. You can hear almost the sound of the DAC from whatever instrument that sample originally came from ringing out there. I did a little bit of processing here, some minor EQ to clean up some things. This is gonna depend on the sample and your ears. And then we're just sending this through a big delay and then a big reverb here. Effects are super important, and we'll talk about it a little more, but for creating that atmosphere, don't be scared to really mix in and layer on the effects. The next thing I want to take a look at are just what I call the atmospherics. 
And when you think about the intended audience for this type of music, it was the person playing a game live. So they're visually seeing something and you're not just providing music, you're really trying to build up that atmosphere. So we can get the musicality from things like the pad, but it's really important to layer on things, what I would call incidentals, right? Little atmospheric bits, bits and Atmo sounds uh, that can really enhance what that listener's hearing. So I grabbed two sounds here. One is from the Zero G Cuckoo Land Ghost in the Machine CD, and the sample just sounds like this alone. So that great atmospherics, it sounds like a little demon voice with a little bit of like percussion rhythm in the background. So I took that, put it in a sampler, and I'm playing an F3 with that. So it's actually uh, pitching up a little bit from the original pitch of the sample, but it sounds like this when soloed. In the original again. So I guess one core lesson to call out here is really take that sample, you know, the original sample, it's, it's got a lot of low end, very chunky, but I figured if I pitched it up a bit and did a little bit of EQ, I could get it to sound a, a very specific way. And that's what we did. So we have a pretty big low cut there to just keep the high frequencies in. We're sending that again through a big reverb there to create that atmosphere. And then we can layer it up with the pad. Now the next thing we have here is another bit of an atmospheric sample, and we'll just solo this one. That's the original sample, also from the Zero G Cuckoo Land Ghost in the Machine sample pack. And then when we have it in context of the track, it sounds like this. So very similar thing here with the processing. I didn't quite like the tonality of the original sample, but I figured if I cut out a lot of the low end, sent it through a big reverb, we would get a little bit of a brighter atmospheric type sound, leaving room for the pad and other elements to exist. And that's what we did here. Same thing with the processing on the sample itself, right? Little bit of release, little bit of uh, attack on there. And then uh, there's our MIDI. It's actually pitched down uh, one from the original uh, sample pitch. And then once we get that in context with both atmospheric bits, and then we add in the pad. Now for the drums, we of course also got those from a sample pack and you'll find a lot of great sample CDs with more industrial sounding beats, but typically you're going to want to look for something like a break uh, that you can either loop up and chop up and resequence like classic jungle technique, or you can just loop the thing up and layer other sounds with it. But let's take a peek at this break here and hear the original break. That's just a nice funk break beat. It also comes from a zero G sample CD, uh, funky elements. And we really didn't do much processing to that. We kind of just dragged it in, stretched it to the BPM of the song and looped it up. Next thing we did is we layered up some additional percussive hits on this. There's this really nice register sounding thing, and I took it and tried to layer it up with the kicks in the original break. So that soloed alone sounds like this. Very industrial sounding effect, uh, which I think really helps add to the sound. It's just this cold metallic sound. It, kind of creates this emptiness. Uh, it just sounds good layered up. So if we layer that up with the break, it sounds like this. And 
and that's it for the drums. Now, a lot of these types of songs tended to forego the bass and that they didn't have bass in them. Uh, some did, it really just depends. I really felt like a bass could help this song come alive. And so what I did is tapped into just old school jungle technique and we used a 808 kick with a long tail. So here's the sample. And then what we did is threw that in a sampler as well. And I also have some videos on how to create these jungle basses from 808s, which I'll link in the description. But a little bit of playing around with the envelope on that bass. Trying to make it a little more uh, bouncy and boomy and remove less of that kick. So a bit of an attack on there. And then some basic processing here through a compressor limiter, a little bit of EQ. And then if we look at the MIDI here, what I wanted to do was just create a nice simple bass line um, that kind of had this like push-pull effect, kind of creating this like gooey, pulsing uh, pattern that tried to play well with the theme and atmosphere here. So the bass alone sounds like this. Very simple bass line there. Again, just an 808 kick. And then we put everything together and we basically get the full tune. So if we solo everything. Now there are definitely some really great sample CDs from the 90s that you can find. I'd recommend everybody just do some digging, do some research. I'm gonna flash a couple up on the screen here. But a lot of these sample packs, again, they were heavily used. And they just have some really good sounds and they'll instantly give you that vibe from the 90s. So definitely go dig around. And if you're interested in just digging a little deeper on the subject of these old survival horror game soundtracks, Go check out this video, How Silent Hill Music Was Made by Avith Ortega. Really great in-depth video. It's over 40 minutes long and just goes into a lot more on the technique and history. So definitely go check that one out too. And then of course, a shameless plug here. If you like the tune that we made in this video, be sure to go check out the album Global Control under my alias Greycorp. A lot of tracks on there, very similar in this vein. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And until next time, adios.